Hello and welcome. I'm Melanie Xilakis, European Marketing Lead at Clarius. Thank you for joining us today for our European Live webinar, Wallant, Ultrasound Guided Local Anesthesia Best Practices for Hand Surgery. We have over 2,400 registrations and thank you all for tuning in. Today we will learn with Dr. Suhel Jaziri, a critical care anesthesiologist in Paris, who for the past 15 years has been using ultrasound to guide his procedures and make his practice more accurate and safer. Dr. Jaziri works in a busy emergency clinic, Paris West Hospitalier, and has been using ultrasound to guide his volant procedures, providing 40 to 60 patients per day with optimal localized pain relief while allowing movement for the best surgical results. Walland stands for White Awake Local Anesthesia, no tourniquet. Dr. Jaziri will explore with us today the benefits the ultrasound guided Walland technique offers the doctor, the patient, but also the hospital management. The technique supported and guided by ultrasound can indeed improve patient safety and procedural success and it is used to treat a series of hand and wrist injuries and wounds. Wallant offers a number of advantages when compared to its alternatives of full sedation or local anesthesia with the tourniquet. But before we get into details and hear from our expert, I would like to introduce to you your host, Shelley Gunter. Shelley Gunter is an experienced sonographer and works as a clinical marketing manager at Clarius. She has over 25 years of experience as a clinical ultrasound expert with deep experience in both general ultrasound and echocardiography. At Clarius, Shelley is dedicated to providing the highest quality educational content for clinicians looking to add wireless ultrasound to their practice by delivering practical webinars like this one today and video tutorials for our Clarius classroom, which now features, features over 250 on-demand videos. Please join me in welcoming Shelley. Hi, Shelley. Hi, Eleni. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so excited to be hosting another webinar on the topic of ultrasound guided regional anesthesia. And it's great that this time we have a European presenter. Dr. Jaziri will be educating us about a uh, new and very interesting topic, uh, which is how he uses ultrasound to guide Wallant anesthesia in the hand. And Wallant is totally new to me. So I've been kind of learning as we've been kind of setting up for this webinar. So it's great. Uh, it continues to amaze and impress me that so many anesthesiologists are adopting ultrasound into their practices and customizing their ultrasound guided techniques to suit many different injections and blocks. And it's certainly reflected in the large number of registrants we have for this webinar. From regional anesthesia webinars we've had in the past, we know that ultrasound's being used more and more for guiding regional blocks, no shortage of literature on the topic itself. Wallant is wide awake, local anesthesia, no tourniquet. And it's been used in anesthesia practice for several years now, actually originating in Canada. Uh, but the benefits of Wallant are being, uh, being safety, greater access to surgical needs, and improved intraoperative diagnosis and assessment. And until very recently, Wallant has been just landmark guided. Um, in my search for articles specifically about ultrasound guided Wallant, there's very little literature out there, um, which really means that Dr. Jaziri is paving the way for others to follow in his footsteps. So this first paper, um, this is a mini review from the practitioner in anesthesia resuscitation, which um, confirms that what we're continuing to learn um, for the benefits of ultrasound guided injections. The author states that while on anesthesia, ultrasound provides more targeted infiltration, which actually decreases the volume required um, to achieve anesthesia. And the next paper is just something that Dr. Jazira sent me yesterday. Um, it's a thesis um, presented in April of this year. Uh, it does a deep dive to compare ultrasound guided Wallant to axillary block for hand or wrist surgery. And again, the study looks at a number of variables, including intraoperative motor skills, hemostasis, um, post op rehab, and risk of necrosis. And the authors conclude as well that ultrasound is beneficial not only for imaging the target anatomy, but for confirming anesthetic distribution. 
And this last paper, it's from ASRA, and we did talk about it in a previous webinar, but I think it really still shows the best data we have so far for the increasing use of ultrasound for nerve localization. There's so many benefits uh, to using ultrasound, including hastening the onset of sensory motor block, decreasing the performance of overall time, fewer needle passes, reduction in the occurrence of last. So, you know, really a great thing to be using ultrasound to guide these procedures. So before we go any further, I'd just like to uh, we'd just like to set up a poll, um, just asking, uh, what do you see as the risks and limitations to blind injections for the anesthesiologist? Uh, is it inaccurate injections, um, imprecise? Uh, you're requiring more dosing, you know, just add a little more. Um, are you causing pain when to your patients when you're injecting or having to repeat injections? Um, or are you injecting into the wrong place? We'll give you a couple more seconds to answer the poll. Three, two, one. So yeah, inaccurate and imprecise injections are kind of at the top of the list here. So um, I think uh, watching Dr. Jaziri's ultrasound technique is really going to instill confidence in a lot of people and can provide so many benefits. So I can't wait for you all to see the beautiful ultrasound imaging in this webinar. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome Dr. Jaziri to educate us on Wallant and how he uses high resolution ultrasound to improve his Wallant procedures. Dr. Jaziri? Hi, everybody. I, uh, I'd like to thank um, to thank uh, Clarius team and Deza for inviting me today to, um, to talk about wallant anesthesia, which is wide awake uh, local anesthesia, no tourniquets. This technique uh, was uh, first described by Dr. Lalande in Canada 30 years ago, and uh, he's still um, doing it. Uh, because of the lack of anesthesiologist, it was uh, introduced for um, uh, upper extremity fractures and then lower extremity fractures. It's a technique that we um, done without echography and by surgeons. It is a new technique in France. It was introduced um, five years ago. It uh, has some, uh, some advantages for patients from surgeons. That's an easy technique, safety and comfortable for patients by avoiding tourniquet. There's no uh, anesthesia team providers, so no appointments with anesthesiologists. They can eat before and after surgery, and we don't stop medications. They can take their medications, no problem with that. And the first complaint of a general anesthesia was postoperative nausea and vomiting, which is, which is absent here. And patients have the ability to provide its own transportation to surgery and from surgery. For surgeons, they can test their surgery actively by uh, in life and without long postoperative monitoring. The patients must love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These procedures traditionally they are in hospitals or surgery centers with operating rooms, traditional derping with an operating room team and anesthesia team. So we have to do local anesthesia with or without sedation. So general anesthesia or intravenous local anesthesia, all these procedures are monitored procedures with post-operative surveillance and uh, ambulatory procedures. So what Valent have new? This operations are done in dedicated areas near operating rooms with single drafts, with masks on cell gloves only. Regional anesthesia previously performed by surgeons with monitoring, without monitoring and no postoperative surveillance. So a review of literature, a recent review by American team, they talked about surgery for this surgery. So they show that when we do valent anesthesia in dedicated areas near operating rooms with single drop and iodine or chloroxidine in a cell tray with limited instrumentations, they have no infections. And Leblanc in a study comparing the, the two um, cell techniques, 
with 1,504 CTRs, car carpal tunnel release, he had only six superficial infections, no deep infections, and no need to treat these infections with surgery, only oral antibiotics. It's very important. What about pain? What about anxiety and comfort? Satisfaction, satisfaction, control, pain, and anxiety and comfort are equivalent or better with violent anesthesia than general anesthesia or low, local anesthesia with tourniquet, with or without sedation. And without complications more than the other techniques, no difference intraoperative or postoperative complications. Sorry, Dr. Jaziri, have you ever had seen any complications with the well lungs? Never. In my practice, I never see any complications. That's the incredible. Complications with the valent anesthesia are vasovagal secondary to uh, pain injection, some adrenaline rush, for adrenaline and vascular injections, but we have no nausea and vomiting because you have not general anesthesia. And in some studies, they, they, they experience it, uh, a high doses of uh, lidocaine, such as uh, 22 milligram kilo without toxicity, systemic toxicity of local anesthetic. And it's very interesting because in France, we are limited to seven milligram kilo. The only thing is digital ischemia, but we have to, to have fentolamine to reverse the vascular contraction. And even uh, using violent anesthesia is very costless because you have no operating room, no abandoned dropping. We have a very a real reduction of cost. So in some studies like Maila, they, they demonstrated that the, uh, the cost is lesser than, more, is less expensive, $44 per minute less expensive than general anesthesia or local anesthesia with tourniquet. It's very important. All of our surgeries. It's a huge number. I mean, it, yes. it would seem, yes. seem to me that number. hospitals and clinics would be so much in favor of Wallant over um, yeah, it's very local important. anesthesia with tourniquet. Yeah. Yeah. Really, with single trigger finger release performed in operating rooms, it costs three thousand three hundred forty four point forty six dollars more expensive than the, the same procedure with violent anesthesia. Wow! So it's very expensive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the same results. So it's very very interesting for us. So violent anesthesia is a simple technique with favorable outcome with the better patient satisfactions. Local anesthesia is directly in the operative site without tourniquet and the patients are awake. But in our practice, practice all patients are awake. We have, in my practice, I have no sedations, even in local anesthesia with tourniquet. But tourniquet is very uncomfortable for, for patients, really. And it have an optimal pain and the hemostasis control for surgeons. So how we do it? We have to put in the site of surgery with a little needle, 27 gauge needle, without ultrasound guidance, subcutaneous infiltrations. The needle is perpendicular to the skin. Introduce it. We have to introduce the needle perpendicular to the skin. We wait until swelling the tissues. And then the, we have to, to put lidocaine 1% with adrenaline 10 micrograms milliliters, buffered by bicarbonate 8.4%, one milliliter for 10 milliliter solution. In France, we are limited to seven milligram kilos, but some studies showed 22 milligram kilos and I saw uh, 35 milligram kilos in one study. Wow. It's important for yeah. a person of 70 kilos, it's 1.5 gram. It's important, really. And this, we have to wait 30 minutes for a half to have the maximum tourniquet, chemical tourniquet. So we'll see the volumes after because it's very important. So in valid anesthesia, we have 
pain injection. So we have to inject slowly with the bicarbonate and with a little needle with 27 gauge needle. There's some contra contradiction. We have to wait for surgical chemical um, tourniquet. But our fear was only finger necrosis. But finger necrosis is not related to lidocaine and is not related to adrenaline. It was related to pyrocaine, which is vasoconstrictive in itself, and cocaine, which is you, you used before 1950. And but not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore, but also okay. this, after ni 1950s, uh, prospective uh, retrospective studies showed that there's no relation, re relation between uh, adrenaline or li li used with lidocaine for finger necrosis. So it's not the meat disappeared. So we can use it and we have to use it. So that's right. How long? How long? Like, so you have you wait thirty minutes um, yeah. until after the injection, and then mm -hmm. how long from there? How big is the window um, after that? Um, and like, if you couldn't start the surgery for two hours after that, would it still be effective? Yes, we have two, okay. two hours anesthesia, but uh, okay. In our in our practice, the surgery we 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 have some indications are uh, for um, for surgery with. Um, 10, 15 minutes duration. Hmm. We can have some uh, fractures, but uh, it, it never been then more, more uh, to uh, 45 minutes. Okay. So in our practice, we do it for trigger finger releases, fracture, uh, flexor tendon releases, carpal tunnel releases, finger tumors, Dupuytren disease, and tendon transfer. But it was described at first time for fractures. So, in our practice, this is carpal tunnel syndrome release with echography, hand impronation. I put lidocaine 1% with other range, five microgram milliliters, one milliliter of bicarbonate to buffer and 0.4, uh, 8.5. I, I put dexamethasone 1000 microgram for rebound pain. So here we see the needle, I do a first and introduce the needle one centimeter above the wrist flexion crease region to do a distal block with infiltrations of the structures here. And I do one millimeter under the nerve, four millimeters here and one millimeter under the nerve and between the nerve and the flexor tendons. Before, like that. Wow. It's a distal block because it's not here, but it's here. It's the beginning, just before the beginning of the uh, transversal tendon, flexor tendon. And then I do a second one, hand impronation, and the lateral side, in the radial side, and I do infiltration in the surgical sites because we have endoscopic surgery for these and the, the, the incision is here. So I do infiltration. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a pyramidic zone. So we are in the top of the pyramid and we inject on the top infiltration. All my, my solution will infiltrate the, the, the bottom. So we have threading tissues that I'll, I'll show you here in the hand only with injection with five milliliters. Just here we have the beginning of the ligament and we have to put anesthesia on the beginning of the ligament. You see here is the swelling of the tissues. It's, it's pretty incredible how well you can see the needle. And, and I think that's just because you're able to go in um, with a needle totally perpendicular to the sound beam or, or, or exactly. you know, parallel have, to the, yeah. We have a precise injection. We see where, where is it in our injection? Where is our needle? What structures we have to, uh, to not, um, it's very important, very important. Mm -hmm. And the solution will diffusion inside five centimeters above the distal block. This is the distal block. The first block is the distal right. block. Okay. 
And in this, I'm just going to point out the median nerve is right here for, yes. for everybody. Right here, yeah. Right here is the median nerve. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right here, the median nerve. And you, we see here the, the solution has spread five centimeters above the median nerve, approximately. Right. So our fifth is finger necrosis, and we have to do and to have in our blocks fentolamine. What, what, which is used for um, phacocomocytoma first, first time. It's a competitive and non-selective short acting antagonist of alpha one and two receptors in contact of smooth vascular muscles. It induces vasodilatation and decreases the blood flow. But we have to put it in the injection site. And its action begins 85 minutes after its administration. And we have to put 0.5 milligrams to two milligrams. I never see it, I see it today, the bottles, because I'm curious. <laughs> and it was used in, uh, in dentistry under the name of Overaz, or Oraverse. Only dentists use it. Never been used in your surgeon or par anesthesiologist, never. I never, I, I, don't, I don't have, we don't have studies. Some cases, but no studies. So when it has some uh, some contraindications, classically, allergia to lidocaine, to amid local anesthetics, non-cooperative patients, active infections, needle phobia, sickle cell disease, that we, because of adrenaline that uh, uh, may, may lead to vasoinclusive crisis, all compromised peripheral circulation or CV preparative ischemia, we have to, are not indicated. That's scleroderma, Berger disease, renal disease, vasculitis, diabetes with nerve damage, we have not to do valent anesthesia. Because we have the risk important of necrosis, finger necrosis. Right. So how much volumes? Classically, surgeons use volumes inferior to, and some anesthesiologists inferior to 50 milliliters. And we do lidocaine 1% and with adrenaline 10 micrograms milliliters. But some surgeons use big volumes like 15 to 100 milliliters. So we have to divide the consultation by two by, by um, adding uh, physiologic serum to have lidocaine 0.5% and there is 5 microgram milliliters. And sometimes there's more they put in the, in the leg, 100 to 200 milliliters of lidocaine to 0.25% uh, and the in 2.5 micrograms. But classically, it, in the hand, in the anterior side of the hand, we use one milliliter in the finger, two, three, and five milliliters here. 10 milliliters in the wrist and under. And the other side of the hand, the posterior side, we use dorsal side 10 milliliters and only two milliliters in the fingers. I'm curious, um, just a little bit off topic, but um, for what, what types of foot surgeries are done uh, only fractures, with Wallant? Fractures. Okay, thank you. Essentially fractures that I described in the literature. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, no uh, procedures like... Um, uh, canal, uh, carpent uh, tunnel uh, release, no other procedures, only fractures. Okay. And open ones. What ultrasound give us with valent anesthesia? We can do and we can see our structures to be avoided, like nerves, vessels, flexuses, and we have to see our infiltrations. You can control our diffusion and we can put anesthesia, anesthetic infiltration around the lesion. Even in fractures, cysts, or lipoma, or flexor tendons. So we, we can reduce with that the volumes and we can reduce the number of punctures by using a longer needle dedicated to local region anesthesia. So, local region anesthesia or valent anesthesia, no. It's we have to choose the best technique for our patients. 
we can for some patients we can use well anesthesia for some other patients we can use local region anesthesia and some patients you can use the local region anesthesia with well anesthesia it's very interesting Studies compared usually violent anesthesia to general anesthesia or intravenous regional anesthesia with sedation. Rarely, accelerated block or distal blocks without sedation, usually with sedation. And it permits us to, to avoid nerve and muscle damages and toxic damages from tourniquet when it's done over 20 minutes. Very important. So let's see carpal ligament. The carpal ligament is here, is lying above the median nerve flexor tendons. And sometimes it goes to the median nerve. And the surgery will be here to cut under above the nerve this ligament. We can do open surgery or endoscopic surgery. And we put anesthesia here. We see here there's nerves. We can put anesthesia here and then see that we see that is a pyramidic, like a pyramid here. So when you inject here or we'll diffuse here. It's my technique. So some st uh, studies of carpal tunnel release that compared valent anesthesia to intravenous surgeon anesthesia. This is um, a recent study uh, from Brazilian study that uh, includes two centers. They included uh, 78 patients. Valent was in 38 patients and uh, intravenous uh, region anesthesia 40, 34. Surgical indications are classic, failure to conserve it is treatment for at least three months, like injection of steroids. Clinical motor impairment proven by electromyograph test, and the patient included were as a one and two. Surgeons do one anesthesia with volumes of 10 to 10 milliliters, generally, 1% lidocaine the epinephrine at this proportion, Five minutes in the west uh, flexion freeze region with injecting subfacial planes on, between ulna and median nerve. Then they remove slowly the needle and the after swelling tissues, and the, they do the same thing to the radial side of proximal palma, palmar region with two and three millimeters. And the remaining solution three to seven meters in the subdermal plane anteriorly to the transverse carpal ligament, just above. Which we saw, we, which is what we saw in your demonstration, right? In, yeah. Where the, yeah, okay. Intravenous surgeon anesthesia was done by anesthesia team. It's classic distal venous puncture with the HMAC bandage and second in proximal, 40 milliliters lidocaine. 0.5%, so it was uh, three, four milligram kilos. And the tourniquet was removed 30 minutes after. And there's no in demographic, in demographic, where there's no difference between age, gender, female, uh, or male, no differences in criterias. Yeah. But this, the only difference is the pain, pain after surgery. Postoperative pain, in two hours pain, they tested four hours pain, six hours pain, eight hours pain, and 12 hours pain. Until eight hours pain, we have a big difference between one anesthesia and intravenous region anesthesia. It's very, very important. And after 12, uh, 12 hours, it's the same thing. But one thing is important here is the mean time for surgery. It's significantly more in one anesthesia because of the infiltration tissues. Surgeons have some difficulties with because of the infiltration of the tissues. So it takes more time for surgery. They conclude to, to, to by the technique was more effective than intervening surgeon anesthesia in relation to pain control. 
Operating group time was more in uh, violent anesthesia and use of analysis in postoperative period and the failure rate is in open surgery for CTS. The second for carpal tunnel syndrome in the latter side is the same thing, violent anesthesia versus intravenous surgeon anesthesia in the German Switzerland uh, team, which included 400 patients for open carpal tunnel release. Intravenous surgeon anesthesia with a short period surveillance in outpatient clinic with procaine 0.75% with tourniquet and valent was a walk-in procedure with immediate discharge. So patients after valent, they go home, no surveillance. Mm -hmm. The injection was similar, tolerable for both techniques, both the same thing for postoperative pain that are perceived only, this, there's no difference in pain over all patients. All, only all the patients with 80 years old or more are, are better, I have more or less, less pain. And this is because of tourniquet, because they have, they have um, sarcopenia. So tourniquet is very, very painful for them. Without tourniquet, elderly are best. Okay. And they, the, there was more unscheduled consultation because patients, doesn't see any doctors with Valent. They go home. So they need something, sometimes they're bleeding, they need information. So we have more shuttled consultation after Valent anesthesia. Because they're not in the hospital anymore, they're gonna consult mm -hmm. more. Yeah, got gotcha. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. And this is very important. We have to talk for, for them before they're leaving. So, this is my technique for trigger finger release. Um, here I'm showing you this technique. I do the hand is very painful. So I do local anesthesia with a 30 goes needle 0 0.5 milliliter of lidocaine 0.3%. And then a second puncture with 24 goes needle with 40 milliliter length and inject just inside of the uh, surgical site here. This is a flex tendon. We'll see the needle. Yeah. When injected, we see here yeah. artery, the nerve, and we have to inject between subcutaneous, subcutaneous structures and the flex tendon. This is the side, surgical side. Yes, we have to put only three or four milliliters of the solution. It's sufficient. I usually make some dexamethasone, 20 milligrams, 30 micrograms, sorry, for rebound pain. But it's a, a surgery, not painful surgery. 10 minutes surgery without pain after. They take no medications in my practice, only paracetamol once the day after yeah. surgery. It's very important. Yeah, so very little pain from the surgery and even less pain yeah. because they've had no tourniquet. Exactly. And yeah. then the same thing for open ones, it's the fifth finger. The same, mm -hmm. I do a first little puncture here with the, the same concentration. And then here I will put anesthesia like the other, the other, but I put more near um, nerves. Nerves are here. You see, I more, more I one milliliter here yeah. and one milliliter point five each side. Okay, so here and here. Yeah. Eight. See, that's flexor tendon, first section tendon here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the nerves, and we see some arteries. Yeah. Yeah. They're so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
and you can have surgery, perform surgery. We can um, do some nerve reparation with a, without tourniquet for 40, 40, 40 minutes. It's very easy, really. And then they can uh, go at home after eating. In our practice, they eat with us. Wow. <laughs> so we can talk with, you, with do them. You, do you have to buy them lunch? <laughs> yes, sometimes, yes, <laughs> really. Because we have to talk with them. With their, they, they eat and they, they talk with us. We, and then we, we, we give them some indications. So uh, we have less, less um, unscheduled consultations. We have no mm -hmm. consultations. Hmm. So, we have to, 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 to learn this technique to our students. We have to um, introduce in our practice. We have to do it with the choreography. It's very important. It's, an, it's anesthesia. It's very important that the neurologist take anesthesia and do it. Right, right. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Dr. Jazeera. That's great. Um, yeah, and again, I just the, the ultrasound imaging is so good, and, and you make it look very easy, so <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I hope it's very easy for everyone. I'm just going to, I have a model, um, and I'm just going to do a little bit of hand ultrasound just to kind of give our viewers a little uh, peek at how easy the tendons and the nerves are to, to visualize, and, and then we'll kind of, you can kind of um, kind of walk me through and maybe point out some things. So I'm just okay. going to head over to the to the machine here. So I think I'll start with the median nerve just because you uh, that's kind of what, what your first uh, first video was. And uh, just I'm just transverse on the wrist here. Yeah. Let's get our ca camera straightened around. And so over here is the radial artery. Yeah. And then I've got the median nerve right yeah. here. In this here, area. In I'm just going to turn the gain up yeah, a little bit. So it's, exactly. a, it's always a little bit darker in appearance than the tendons no, are. Um, once here. you're, um, yeah. but yeah, here we're great. And then yeah, just, yeah. um, yeah. And I'm right in the, the crease of the wrist. And if I get, uh, if you wiggle your fingers a little bit, we can see the, the tendons it's move, but not here, the nerve. Yeah. So that's kind of a good way Thank of you. kind of establishing that you're in the right area. Mm. So I'm using the L20 scanner. Um, it's a nice small footprint on the on the scanner here, and it's got um, it, it, it's great if you don't have a lot of real estate in the area where you want to do your injection. So um, really nice that way. And another thing, right here. here, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. So we'd be coming in from this angle here. Yeah, from right and, and, and side, right, radial side over here. Yeah, and the side so there's my radial the artery. We have to avoid tendons and to go mm -hmm. straight to the point. So we right. have to put the just where we want. And this is the, um, uh, the, it's the beginning of the carpal of the tunnel. Tendon. Yeah. Yes. It's the yeah. beginning. It's the right. beginning. Yeah. Really nice. Um, so I'm using uh, I'm using the nerve pain preset here. Just it just makes the nerves stand out really nicely. And I just wanted to point out to the viewers that. We do have a new focal zone control um, with the latest software. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, previously um, th the app did it all for you, but this gives the users a little bit more control if they want. And so you can just by tapping on the screen, adjust the position of the focal zone. And if you want to kind of fine tune in a certain area, it'll just sharpen things up at that level. Okay. So it's kind of a nice feature as well. We have to forget, um, to do it. Just when the, where, where is the middle nerve? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we'll just go up to the uh, flexor tendons in the hand here. Oh, and, it's uh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. My model, my model has big, I, big tendons and big arteries. Not like I was scanning myself and my arteries were so can tiny. Can he move but... his hand? Can mm -hmm. he move his hand, please? Yeah. Move your, move your fingers. Yeah. We see the tendons yeah. moving. Yeah. This and then this, this darker this darker area here is is just adjacent muscle, so it looks a little bit more we would call it hypoechoic um, yeah. than the actual tendon itself. But you can even see the uh, the division between the, um, the, the uh, tendon, the yeah. deep tendon, and the the superficial tendon. And the superficial tendon, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the vessel over here, and I think you had mentioned that the nerves will sit in between 
the um, exactly. vessel and the uh, and the uh, tendon. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. This is Go right in here. Actually, and the nerve here, and you have yeah. an injection will be here. Okay. We we don't have to uh, to inject in the tendon seat. We have to avoid it. It's very important. Right, right. And the tendon sheath being here. Oh. This is probably, yeah, tendon sheath That's, here. Uh, tendon sheath. Not. We don't have to touch it because it's very important. It can be okay. infections. So to avoid infection. Right, now. right. Okay, so I'm just going to freeze my image here. Great. Good. Okay. Yeah, so the musculoskeletal imaging, um, you know, especially like in the hand and the wrist, everything kind of runs very perpendicular to the sound beam going in. So so the imaging is 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 easier and and your the definition and the detail is is really nice. So so yeah, great. Okay, so I'm going to at this point I just I'll just invite um people to uh, remind people to put your questions into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And uh, I'm just going to hand it back to Eleni for a few minutes just to um, give everybody a chance to, uh, to submit their questions. Yes. Um, thank you, Dr. Terziri, for a very inspiring lecture and for sharing your ultrasound strategies for the most effective and pain-free hand surgery. And thank you, Shelley for the amazing live scanning as always. It's so exciting to see what you can achieve with your L20 HD3. And, and thank you all for your interest in ultrasound in this live webinar. So as Shelley said, please take a moment and answer our poll. You have many options below because we want to give you any additional information you may need. Pricing and availability vary by region. So please let us know if you wish to have more information or to get a quote. You may opt to speak to one of our experts about the advantages of a wireless ultrasound. Um, if you'd like to discuss scanner features, please select that option. And you can also book a virtual one-to-one -one demo with our clinical experts to see the new Claris HD3 in action in an interactive session. And we can send you, of course, more ultrasound video tutorials for anesthesiologists if you wish to receive more resources. Please do select as many options as you like. Um, and while you are, um, I will take just a moment to tell you about the world first third generation wireless ultrasound. Our new uh, Clarius HD3 scanners deliver for the highest definition ultrasound imaging. Now 30% smaller and lighter with an integrated battery, Clarius HD3 is the leading choice for anesthesiologists with an easy to use app powered by artificial intelligence and connected to the cloud. Our Clarice linear scanners are specifically designed to effectively guide regional blocks with superior MSK and needle imaging. They deliver several advantages for the nimble anesthesiologist. Clarice is unrivaled for near field and high resolution imaging in a handheld device. This best in class imaging is what you need for great tissue and needle visualization. As you saw today, you can get a clear view of nerves, vascular structures, other anatomy, and your needle for safe ultrasound guided injections. Claris is also wireless, freeing up space with zero footprint for ultra portability in a variety of settings. You get free movement with normal wires getting in the way and touching your sterile prep area. With no wires, Claris is also so much faster to clean, to disinfect, or fully encase in a sterile bag. Only Claris delivers wireless scanners with an ecosystem that includes a free app for your iOS or Android device with free updates. We just had one. Available with our new membership, Claris Cloud is available to easily capture and manage unlimited exams from anywhere in the cloud. Your membership includes Claris classroom videos with experts just like Dr. Jaziri and onboarding with Claris clinicians to build up your ultrasound scanning skills. And Claris Live delivers one click at telemedicine if you would like to share your live scanning with a colleague to get a second opinion. So let's close our poll. Three, two, one. Thank you. If you ask for more information, we will get back to you in the coming week. And now to our Q&A live session. This is the most interactive part of our webinar. So please do not hesitate to um, write down your questions. So 
Um, I'd like to welcome back Dr. Jaziri and Shelly to answer your questions. Please use the uh, questions icon in the menu bar um, at the bottom of your screen and ask your questions for our great clinicians. Shelly, please moderate. All right. Well, we have quite a few questions here. I'm just kind of going through. There's one question here that says, how would one do Wallant for wrist fracture? For wrist fractures, I never use it. I use it only for these the indications I, I, sh I show you. And is it because it's too distal? Um, it's too, too proximal. Too proximal and surgeons um, spread much time in, uh, in, uh, in surgery in wrist uh, fractures. So they, they doesn't like um, wallet anesthesia okay. because of the infiltration of tissues infiltration. All right. Um, here's a question says, I saw in one image the word DEXA was mentioned. Is that dexamethasone? And would it, yes. um, would, uh, and she would be worried about local infection? Is that a concern? No, there's no local infections. And there's no demonstration that uh, dexamethasone gives local in, in fact, more uh, local infections. It's, um, I used with um, 100 micrograms. And in the studies that I saw, they use one milligram dexamethasone without infections. So if you have one, one milligram without infections, so 100 microgram, I don't uh, think there's no, there's infection. I, I don't ever saw infections in my, in my practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were saying, yeah. Never, never, never see it. Uh, I, 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 um, I, uh, I practice uh, Valent in uh, four years, 10 hand a day. And I used dexamethasone in my old blocks from uh, axillary block, distal blocks uh, from 10 years ago. So I never have such, uh, infection, never. So great, yeah. Um, how would you do anesthesia to the dorsum of the hand? It's, it's, it's like um, uh, carpal tunnel release, the same mm. thing. We do 10 milliliters in the dorsal side of the hand and the same thing in the anterior uh, side of the hand. Okay. Um, I assume you have some kind of preparation area while waiting for the block onset. Who is with the patient? Um, is the patient monitored somehow or by someone? No, no, the patient is waiting. It does, it's not necessary? No, it's not necessary. Okay. If, if we don't have uh, vasovagal um, signs, don't have to motivate the patients. If the, the first okay. injection is very important, only the first. If the injection is finished, they have nothing. They feel right. nothing. It's almost too good to be true. <laughs> 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 um, uh, next question. Thank you for a great webinar. In the UK, we do not have phentolamine. What are other options? There's no other options. Mm. Only so they can't do. They have, okay. We have only phentolamine. Even in France, we don't have it. But in, this, in, um, in, den in dental industry, they have it. I, and we have uh, the, same, the, same, the same thing. The, the uh, dentists and us have the same phentolamine. We do hmm, okay. phentolamine from dentists. So in, in our clinic, we don't have it too. So I, we buy it from the, from dentist industry. From the dentist. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Because um, it's, it's not it's not protected for us. It's only protected right. for dentists. Right. Hmm. And they never use it. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so they have lots left over. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can you visualize Dupuytren's cords with the ultrasound? Yes, yes, we can. Yeah, we can. Yeah. We can see all tendons and the, the mm -hmm. tendons. Yes, we can. It's it's yeah. very 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 simple. It's uh, yeah. They 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 they're quite we obvious, can, aren't they? Surgery, yeah. We can do surgery under echography. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, I we did read it. about that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Uh, very right. amazing. Because yeah, as soon as do one anesthesia and with surgeons, we do his surgery with uh, ultrasound. 
It's very amazing. Use the, the same ultrasound, the same machine. It's very amazing. And the same patient. It's yeah. I think I think that's the thing. I'm uh, people are are learning is that when you have a high resolution ultrasound scanner, there's just so much you can see. It just yes. opens up so many opens up so many opportunities um, for afraid. for visualizing, for diagnosing, for for performing procedures like like you do. So yeah, I, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> yes, it is a, a very precise machine, really. Mm -hmm. There's a question that often comes up. How do you clean the probe? Ah, I have um, uh, lunges that sterilize the probe. Usually I sterilize the probe with lunges and I put it in the solution for 10 minutes. Mm, okay. okay. And then yeah. I'll, uh, I'll take it with the uh, sterilized gloves and use it like that. Because mm -hmm. um, L20 and uh, Clarius, uh, uh, Clarius um, machines, you can we can put them in the in the solution. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It it's very it's nice, and there's no yeah. no wires or anything that you have to worry yeah. about. Right. Can a wrist block under ultrasound cover all hand surgeries? Yes, it's more it can, pretty much all all, all surgeries. I, I think it's it's possible. Fractures, meta metacarpal fractures, uh, pharyngeal fractures, uh, all surgery of the hands. It's it's possible. We we okay. have to do it in some times. It's it's very po it's possible with patients who have to eat and uh, patients who have to go home uh, straight after surgery. We do it. It's possible. Mm -hmm. All surgeries are possible. All distal hand surgeries are possible with one of them. Okay. One person asks, how many cases are converted to general anesthesia? There's no case is converted, never convert. We have never converted, really. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> uh, let me see here. I usually stress it for, to convert for general anesthesia, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have to convert. It's, uh, it works. Do you use sodium bicarbonate? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I use usually sodium bicarbonate to buffer the, the okay. It's important. All right, great. Um, I think I'll do one last question here. What is your experience with plain bupivacaine and ropivacaine? So ropivacaine, we don't have to use it in valentine anesthesia because it's vasoconstrictive. So we have the risk of uh, finger um, necrosis and we can't use it with um, adrenaline because it's like uh, pliocaine, it's, it's very vasoconstrictive. And it longs, uh, it, it it lasts very very long. It's a long show, a long um, anesthetic. So we, uh, we don't have to use it in uh, in valent anesthesia. But bupivacaine is used in uh, valent anesthesia in association with uh, lidocaine, like uh, the the um, tethys like uh, I I sent you yesterday. It's bupivacaine five milliliters and five milliliters of lidocaine with adrenaline. And we, we have, um, they have uh, a good um, results with uh, pain and rebound pain. And they put one milligram of dexamethasone there in the, in the solution and mm -hmm. inside of the surgery. So uh, they have uh, no rebound pain and uh, they have uh, 24 hours uh, without pain. So it's, it's, it's very good results. Okay. And kind of on that same note, somebody is asking, do, um, can you use 0.5% marcaine instead of lidocaine, lidocaine with epi? We can. Yes, we can. Yeah. We can use the marcaine instead of, um, of uh, lidocaine. It's possible because we are waiting 30 minutes and it acts uh, in 10 minutes. It's okay. We can. Okay. And it's Great. a long uh, anesthetic. It's, uh, it's okay with uh, with lidocaine. Good. Well, we are at the top of the hour, so I think we'll close out the Q&A section, but we will um, be getting back to you uh, by an email to answer your questions in the coming days. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Jaziri. I will hand it back thank to you. Eleni just for some closing remarks, and uh, thank you all. Thank you, Shelley. And yes, thank you for your questions. We will definitely get back to you um, in the following coming week with answers if we didn't have the time to answer now. You will also receive an email from us with all the slides and the webinar recording in the next few days.
But now I would like to thank Dr. Jaziri for inviting us to Paris West Hospitalier and letting us film his procedures to create this webinar for you. Um, and of course, thank you, Shelley, for showing us around the HD3 and your scanning techniques. And thank you all for joining us today. Um, we hope you enjoyed the session and we will definitely see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Jaziri, Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.